When I first started FPV, all I wanted to do was freestyle. Hey, uh. To whoever may need this nugget of encouragement, things will be alright, so push on word with me. I get it, the eyes will stack back against the wall, but even consider it such, no, you'll stand tired. Sat and watch from the sidelines, one too many times. Wicked games to play, make me wanna lose my mind. Found solitude, knowing it'll be over soon. Ever need a boost, count on me for the one two. Trouble don't last when the tough get going. Baby, all we do is win, so show me my opponent. Adversity, doubt, stress, could care less, cause how we handle those like an S on our chest. Super proud of how we held it down on the way up. Can't wait for our day to ball, this is a layup. Nobody ever said this would be easy, but trust when I say that you got I it. Know you me. been looking for a breakthrough, trying our best to make do. Every day is something new, but change don't come, oh yes, it's true. Brighter days are straight ahead. Follow me, won't be misled. Just look up, don't hang your head. We gon' shine somehow one day Word to O'Shea, today's been a good day Don't let one bad apple spoil the tree The fruits of our labor seem right Can't you see a little insight So they'll never dim your light Been wrong for too long, this here feels so right Leave your fears in the rear view Right now on the mission Tryna stay the course on this road to redemption Giving up seems tempting, but no need Cause I got you and you got me A little you and I why will get us by Through the storm and the rain I'll be by your side Look alive The best has yet to come Just some words of wisdom Plenty more I know that. you've been looking yeah. for a breakthrough Trying our best to make do Every day is something new But change gonna come Oh yes it's true Brighter days are straight ahead Follow me won't be misled Just look up don't hang your head And we'll get to the promise Yeah and it may seem like things ain't working now But I know we gon' find a way without a doubt Just hold on a little longer, you gon' see this through I've been there, certain things always remain true I know I'm not the best at it, but I'm pretty damn good at crashing, that's for sure This is exactly why I made this the tank freestyle frame is a crowded and competitive marketplace with tons of great options for sure. But I wanted to think out of the box, a new way to reduce components, weight, and increase strength at the same time. So starting out with the core structure, the CNC 7075 billet aluminum base plate is purposely unfinished. It's milled out like jewelry and has these ridges on each end to prevent the arms from rotating or wiggling, but it still allows you to slide them out if you need to replace them. Then you have these short brute-like arms at 13 millimeter wide and six millimeter thick. I have a feeling you will have a hard time breaking these. They meet at the center of the base plate and distribute side to side impact. Then you have these cap plates where it acts as a large washer while being held tight by press nuts and dog bone standoffs. The dog bone standoffs are six millimeter in diameter, which is one millimeter larger than your standard standoffs. The carbon the carbon fiber plate is also T700, which is more premium, stronger, harder to break than your typical T300 carbon fiber. In order to make P5G as compact as possible, all plates are as short as possible, and excess weight is milled out. The kit also includes over 33 lightweight titanium screws in a stylish burnt blue finish, which is 10 times more expensive, but 50% less weight than steel screws. I also included 19 pieces of minimalist supporting TPU prints. You can also choose your colors. You could totally make it your own. The motor wire laces, my new and creative way of holding down motor wires, secure them tight onto the frames so they don't rip out in an accident. If you're on a budget, I also have a P5G core version, which just has less TPU, less premium stuff, but the same great frame. 
P5G not only can take a beating, but it's very tunable and has low vibration characteristics, as it is an ultra-rigid frame. It's ideal to use for cinematic footage, especially with a GoPro on top. I sincerely hope P5G becomes your favorite quad to bash, with a big freaking smile on your face. Time to build, let's go! Look at that shiny base plate and your TPU LED light holder. You can simply twist it in and you might need to use a little tool to help you pop it in. Also make sure the logo is straight. So LED lights also included and you can change the color in beta flight. So just pop that right in there under the tabs. So this is the RX antenna holder that goes on the arm and it fits a full-size TBS Immortal TB2. It can also fit smaller antennas, such as some popular antennas for Express LRS. So two is also included in the kit for diversity users. Some antennas might fit loose, so all you have to do is use two zip ties and just zip tie around the post of the TPU print. Before you bolt together the arms or anything, you have to slide this print on first. Looking at the arms, you see a cutout. That always faces up and out. On the base plate, there are these ridges that stick out and they hold the arms in place. And then you take the caps and put them right on top. Match them to the holes. Take your M3x12 screws and screw them into the press nuts. So the base plate can take a M3 30x30 stack, M2 25x25 AIO, and a M3 20x20 stack. In this demonstration, I'm going to be using a full 30x30 stack. So take your M3x21 screws and your thin nuts and put them in. So make sure you thread them nice and tight. Screw them as hard as you can. So this is my prototype frame. I'm just gonna put everything we have in here directly into the frame we're building. I've been testing the Speedy B F405 55 amp ESC stack for quite a long time now, and it's been nothing but reliable and quite happy with it, so there's no reason for me to change it out. In this build, I'm also using a Vista, but I'm going to install a O3AU instead. I like using action cameras because they record the sound and there's less props in view, but it adds weight so it can affect flight performance. So the motors I'm using is just from a previous five inch build. They're 2306 1750 kV. It's very smooth and efficient, powerful enough. Um, just use whatever you want that's within the five inch freestyle spec. I think you'll be happy with anything you choose. So the feet have these little hooks. All you have to do is match up the shape and hook them on like slippers. So to wire up the LED light, so positive goes to the plus, the off colored wire will go into D in, and then the black wire goes into ground. I already did it on my prototype, as you can see. And after you've done that, just stick a slice of electrical tape over it, just in case, so it doesn't pop out and short under your ESC. So if you're using a really big stack like this one, you can't put the cap or the pigtail directly in the front or the back. In the back, the VTX is in the way, and in the front, the camera cage is in the way. So the only way is to have the pigtail coming out from the side. But if you use an AIO, it's no problem. There's a lot of space. Or if you use a mini stack, it's no problem at all as well. You can install it however you like. So take your M3 by 10 screws and screw in all your motors. So now's the time to solder all your motor wires and your XT60 pigtail and cap. And once that's done, install your M3 nuts onto your FC. So finally you can solder on your buzzer, your receiver, and don't forget to solder your LED light as well. Take your cone washer and your M3 by 18 screw and put them in the first arm holes. Then you will take the M3 by 20 dog bone standoffs and screw them in as tight as you can. So you can go ahead and screw in all the arms as tight as you can and make sure there's no wiggle in the arms. Now slide in your receiver antenna. 
it does take some effort. And if the antenna gets a little bent, you can just bend it right back and make it straight. To put on the motor wire laces, it's pretty easy. So just pop in the end, wrap, wrap it towards center, under, over, and under. Start your X, and then under and over and under again. Complete the X, and under, and just with a little bit of tension, you just pop it right in. So the buzzer I'm using is a V-Fly Mini. I like it because it's very compact, very light, and it also has a LED light on it. I mean, it's not the loudest, but it fits this frame really well. So I like to install it in the front grill. Just stick a zip tie in the zip tie zone and just put her in there. So when you install it, just make sure the wires don't get pinched by the camera plates. So for my RX Nano, I install it in the back. So I have an example here of a small Express LRS receiver. You can see it fits really well onto that one side. You can zip tie it and just put the antenna into the armband. But for this tutorial, I'm using an RX Nano. I'm just putting it directly in the center and zip tying it. Now take your M3 by 25 dog bone standoff and M3 by 12 screw and screw it in nice and tight. Now's the fun part. Take your front bumper and put in your M3 by 22 standoff. So here's the camera dampener. For the O3 air unit or Vista, it goes in this way. And you can see the back side here has a lip. That has to be on the back of the plate. So you push it in from the back like that. For other camera users, if the Vista or the O3 way doesn't work, you can always rotate the print and see what works for you. So it's a really tight fit. So push in one side first. With the help of a tool, just squeeze in a little and push. And it pops in. So remember, make sure that lip is on the inside of the plate. So now take your action camera mount and push in the M3 by 22 standoff into the hole. The aluminum nut is a tight fit. Thread the nut into the M5 by 20 screw so it can help push it in. So now screw in the front bumper, screw in the rear M3 by 22 standoff and then the action camera mount standoff. Assemble the plates together. Don't screw the camera cage assembly too tight. You will screw it tight later. Now push your camera through the top. It's good to have the coaxial cable over the rear standoff. Then it hovers over your stack and won't touch it. Once you're happy with the position of your camera, so for the O3, the bottom threads matches to the very front and then the top one is variable angle. Take your M2 by six screw and washer and secure your camera. Screw it in as tight as you can. So now match up the rectangular areas. Remember, make sure the screws on your camera cage are loose. Use both thumbs and push as hard as you can. If that doesn't work, you can use a mallet or the back of a screwdriver with a soft rubber handle to help you push it in. Now it's pretty flush. Take your M3 by five screws and that secures your action camera mount. This is the VTX dual antenna mount holder. So that's the bottom side. The flat side's the top side. So you see there's these two little arms. When you install it on the standoffs, it creates a bit of tension onto the antenna. You can fit two antennas on this print. Just for example, I put in the O3 antenna and you can see it's like nice and secure. And there's also a little flap at the back where you screw it onto the top plate and that makes it extra secure. So I also have a Cadex antenna here, just for example. The post is a little thinner, so I wrapped it with electrical tape just to thicken it up. For your dual antenna setup, you could put it on both sides. You can also slide the antenna all the way down if you're scared of damaging the antenna. If you wanna make your own shorty, you can. Take your scissor and slice off the plastic post. Just make sure you don't cut the black wire. 
For me, I'm just going to use these Flywoo dipole antennas that came off my naked O3 air unit. They're bendable, they're half a gram each, and they still have pretty good penetration. I have no issue with these. These are the O3 air unit quick swap holders. Take your M2 nylon nuts and just push them into the print. Slide the print onto the O3 air unit. So under the top plate, we have M2 25 by 25, and we also have M2 20 by 20. So potentially you could even mount an AIO under here for the O3 air unit quick change holder. It's a 20 by 20 mounting configuration. Take your remaining M2 by six screws and screw them into the print. So let's say you have a Proto 25. Now you can move the O3 air unit from quad to quad. So you don't have to buy so many of these because they're expensive. Obviously you still have to unscrew the camera and the standoff that's in the way, and then you just pop it in there. So before we put on the top plate, we have to plug in the VTX into the FC. Oh crap, the wire's too short. Because of the way I put it in, the wire has to curve along the thickness. So luckily I can just take it out of the print and just flip it upside down and put that back in uncoil the wire a little bit just to give it a little bit more length and now it shouldn't be a problem so i'm just going to plug it back in there if your antenna fits loose just slice a piece of electrical tape to thicken the post so this is proto strap it has a shark loop on it so mounting it the traditional way you can have different positions farther forward or farther back if the quad lands upside down, the shark loop will actually protect the battery and also it aids in turtle mode. So this frame also features two toilet tank positions, front and back. So if you're using an action camera, use these two holes. And if you're not using an action camera, use these two holes. That way the LiPo is perfectly centered between all four motors. When you do it toilet tank style, you can angle your action camera quite a bit. And if you have TPU on your action camera, combined with the shark loop, the LiPo is protected very well. So now match up the camera cage's bottom rectangles into the holes of the base plate. When you do it, be careful not to pinch any wires, especially the buzzer and the LED light wire. So now that you push down the camera cage into the base plate, you can go ahead and crank down those camera cage screws now. Finally, we can put in the M3 by nine top plate screws. So the last screw, you're going to put it into the antenna mount, fold it right over and screw it into the top plate. There are two triangular holes on each side. You can sneak a zip tie in there and, and secure your XT60 pigtail to prevent prop strike. There's still a one centimeter gap. You're gonna be fine. So every frame will include a Tessa grip. It's a very sticky lipo pad. So take some rubbing alcohol, clean the top plate a little bit, and then take your sharpest scissor, peel away the plastic for a cleaner cut. So the cool thing about Tessa Grip is it has these tessellations on it where you could follow the lines and make the coolest shapes. the build's almost done, it's time to see if you have magic smoke. So I have this Gap RC smoke stopper and it has a light on the side. If it lights up green, that means it's good. If it's not green, then pull out your LiPo right away because that means something's wrong with your build. 
So I personally made a custom tune for this quad. You can find it at protofpv.com in the support page. I like to run props out. Just make sure all your motor directions are correct. Make sure your quad is pointed in the right direction. Yeah, just check over all your settings before you're made in flight. Now you can make sure all the screws on your quad are nice and tight. you enjoyed the video and gave you some ideas on how to put p5g together if you still have more questions i have resources and links in the description below i sincerely hope you enjoy flying p5g as much as i do and if you like the video please thumbs up subscribe and leave a comment and i'll see you on the next one